Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to our YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Trish and our channel is dedicated to help you grow as a dancer. We do all types of videos from connection, leading and following, technique, and more. And today's video is gonna be recorded out of my home due to the coronavirus and the stay home, work home orders. So um, our focus today is gonna be on salsa, which doesn't take up a whole lot of space. You can do this in a small area because if you're in a salsa club, let's be honest, you don't have a whole lot of room to move anyway. The topic for today is on improving your balance in salsa. And I am wearing socks right now, so make sure you don't have your shoes on yet because the first exercise we're going to do requires relaxing our feet. One of the main things in helping us with balance is having a good base. So this exercise is going to be perfect for you to do every time before you start dancing, or you could do it at night before you go to bed. So grab a tennis ball and let's get to it. What you're gonna do is place the ball on the floor and you can do, I prefer to do it standing up because I can adjust how much pressure I'm putting on my foot, but you could also do this sitting down in a chair. What I want you to do is place uh, one of your feet on the ball and you're going to just press onto the ball of your foot into the ball and then once you're pressing on that, you're going to move your foot side to side and really massage the ball of your foot and try to create more space within your foot. From here, we're going to, I'll turn this way, we're going to uh, kind of step onto the ball as we work all the way down the arch of the foot towards the heel. And then lastly, you press onto the heel. And now we're gonna press our way back to the ball of the foot, really working on massaging through those tendons, through the metatarsals, and try to create some width in your foot. Now we're going to roll forward, maintaining pressure as you roll forward and back. Sometimes your ball might fly from under your toes. It's kind of fun, like that. <laughs> um, and then what I want you to do, we're gonna do the same thing on the other foot. So we start with the weight on the ball of the foot and we're just kind of massaging side to side here and kind of opening up through the ball. And then we're gonna press down the foot until you get to your heel, press on the heel, and then we're gonna take it back. Once you get to the top, then we start rolling. So we're gonna roll to the heel, roll to the ball, roll to the heel, do this a few times, and then we're gonna put that away. I want you to take just a few minutes, not a few minutes, a few moments, and just kind of feel the difference that you might have on the connection to the floor from your feet. Um, for me, I feel like my foot is wider and I have more stability. And this is why we need to do this exercise before we dance because it's gonna give you a wider base to stand on which is gonna help you with balance. If you do this every day, you'll notice a huge difference in your dancing. Okay, so enough of that. Let's go ahead and put on some dance shoes and we're gonna get to it. Um, the next thing I want to talk about in balance is the positions, foot placement, tracking, and maintaining a slight turnout in your feet. And the way that I like to uh, teach all of my students is uh, the movements come from the bottom and then work their way up. So eventually we'll get into talking about the upper body and its role in helping you with balance. So now that we have our shoes on, I want you to stand in um, a ballroom first position, meaning your toes are pointed slightly out and there's about a fist length between the balls of your feet here. The reason we need to do this is it helps us loosen up the range of motion in the hips, which is one of the characteristics of salsa. If your feet aren't turned out or worse, if they're turned in, you'll find that you have a lot of restriction in the hips, which can also cause some pain to your hips and your knee joints, as well as throw you off balance. So it's really important to train yourself to maintain this turnout the entire time that you're dancing any type of uh, rhythmic or Latin style dance. The next thing is placement. So I'm gonna show you from two different views. 
When we take a forward step in salsa, for example, if we're doing our basic and uh, stepping forward with the left foot as the for the leader's foot work, we're going to take our heel of the left foot. We need to slide it alongside the instep of the right. So you're going, it almost feels like you're gonna go diagonally, but naturally, if you go straight forward from your toe and then you make your feet parallel, you'll see that my feet are in two separate tracks. And this is the perfect placement for any forward or back step that you take, is your feet should be in two tracks. You don't want them to be crossed over. You also don't want there to be a third track, so a room for a third foot, because that also can throw you off balance. So it's very important that you slide, try to feel your heel along the instep of your right foot as your foot slides forward and then from the toe you're going to go straight forward and then place your foot down. Now you should be perfectly balanced. I'll show you that from this view. So I'm going to slide along the instep of my right foot until I get to my toe. You can see my heel is in line with my toe. From here, straight forward and then place my weight. Not only that, but uh, the extension from my knee to my toe allows me to take the perfect size step because in salsa, we also don't want to take huge steps. This dance is pretty fast, so we want to keep it nice and compact, and this is one way to be sure of doing that. If you extend from just your knee to your toe, you know that that's going to be a good size. From here, we can take our step, replace the weight, and then take the foot back. So from here to here, I'm working on tracking my foot into position and then tracking. So tracking means that we're maintaining our two tracks with our feet and going forward and back. One, two, three, and five, six, seven. And so again, from this angle now, I'll show you, we have and, we prepare our body, we're about to step forward, we track our left leg forward in its own position. One, two, three, and five, six, seven. One, two, three, and five, six, seven. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna talk about in maintaining good balance when we're dancing is uh, whenever we go take any type of step, we want to try to focus our energy to the toe, the big toe and the second toe. Um, so if you imagine that this is your foot, my hand, you're going to focus your energy right in the middle of your big toe and your first second toe, I guess you would say, when you're taking a step. Oftentimes, I notice that people's energy rolls over to their pinky toe. So the way that looks on their foot is it kind of rolls out like that, which is going to be super um, harmful to your ankle. And of course, you'll lose your balance. So when we're going forward, we don't want it to roll like that to the outside edge, but we wanna put pressure right there, right between the big toe and second toe. What you can do for this is practice walking around your house, focusing on pushing from that position of your foot, okay? And then you can do it backwards as well, pressing onto that spot of your foot as you move back, and then carefully rolling your weight through the foot. So let's recap so far what we have. We're going to warm up our foot by massaging it with a tennis ball. And then once we've done that, we can put on our dance shoes or you could continue to practice in your socks if you wanna get a feel for that uh, work that you just did on the ball. And then you're going to focus on maintaining a turned out position of your feet. Next, you're gonna focus on tracking. So when you dance your basic, you're gonna focus on tracking five, six, seven, your legs should be brushing past one another. Your feet should maintain that turnout. And then the last thing that we've talked about so far is pressing from that sweet spot on your foot, which is in between the big toe and the second toe. That way you don't get sickled feet or have any harm to your joints. All right, that's all that I wanna talk about with the feet. Now I wanna move up to our rib cage region, our ribs, our hips, our upper body and how it plays a role in our balance and so what we want to do in the rhythm dances such as salsa is create an opposition in our body that opposition helps counterbalance within your own movements okay so 
what you want to think of is when preparing to step and uh, you're stepping forward with your left foot is bringing your left side forward. So your left side should be positive as well as your knee bending, the whole side's going to move forward with that. As I did that, I don't know if you noticed, but my right hip pulled back. So right now, I feel like I have a connection through my right side going back, my left side going forward, but then notice my shoulders are counterbalancing that by staying towards the camera. So I've got multi-directional counterbalance right here. This hips back, that knees forward, ribs forward, shoulder forward. I know that can be a little confusing at first, but to simplify, what I want you to do is in place, practice switching knees and hips. So if your left knee comes forward, then your right hip should go back. If your right knee comes forward, then your left hip should go back. And then you can keep alternating this in place. We can even do it to a rhythm of one, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, and five, six, seven. Now, let's talk about the upper arms. Um, notice that I'm keeping them still for now. This is just an exercise and it will help you to stabilize your arms so that they're not moving too much. Sometimes that can throw you off balance as well if your arms are too active and your body is flat. Keeping the arms still, you can just kind of hook them or make fists. You're gonna dance that same action we just did, practicing bending the knees and opening the hips. So we're gonna go one. Notice my arms stay right where they were, they do not move. Two, three, and I think of bringing left side over and then right side over. Five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Let's add a basic. One, two, Three, five, six, seven. This rhythmic action that we're doing in our body all plays a role in our balance as well as our connection with our partner. So it's bonus. One, two, three, five, six, seven. And this is all stuff that you can practice on your own without a partner at home during this coronavirus. All right. Now I want to go into a turn because we do a lot of turns in salsa. When turning, we want to make sure that we are transferring our weight from one foot to the next, turning in between the steps. For example, if I'm doing a right turn, we're going to go one and, two and, change weight, three, then five, six, seven. And again, one and, two and, three, five, six, seven. So how do we do that and stay balanced? Well, here is what we want to do. First, we do all the things we talked about earlier. We do the tracking, the turnout, the placement of the foot. Then we want to up, rotate our upper body and stick our hip back. So we're still doing the same thing. I have my right side forward, my left hip back. I'm creating that opposition. Now, as I do this next part, I'm going to do one, I'm going to do a spin on one foot. Whereas on that spin that I just did, I pivoted around using both feet. So you have a little more stability on the first half than you do on the second. For the second half of this turn, we're going to really rotate our upper body first, and then we're going to snap our hips around. So remember, at the end of this step, your right hip should be pulling back and your left side pulling forward. But first, upper body is going to initiate the rotation and then your hips and feet follow through at the end. Snap. And you'll end in the position that we were doing our drill in, where you have your left knee forward, right hip back, so you can change weight. And then we complete our basic for five, six, seven. Let's try that again. We're going to go one and two and three, five, six, seven. And let's do that again. We have one and two and three, five, six, seven. Excellent. Now let's go into one other turning option that we have. And that is, is if you were doing a uh, cross body lead with an inside turn as a follower. So I'm going to switch roles here. We're going to go, uh, I'll go sideways. So we have 
one, two, three, and then we're going to spin five, six, seven. And then we go back for one, two, three, and five, six, seven. So I'll do that again from here. We have one, two, three, and five, and six, and seven. And then we go back to our basic for one, two, three, five, six, seven. So in doing turns such as that, where you're turning one and a half times or more, really focus on engaging your core. In fact, your core shouldn't be, should be engaged the whole time you're dancing, but especially during turns to help you with balance. You wanna think of pulling the rib cage in, closing here, and also standing up as tall as you can. So as if you're zipping up a tight pair of jeans, the way that action feels of just tucking your pelvic floor and squeezing your belly button to your spine, that's going to make a huge difference in your balance. So again, during that entire turn, I want you to focus on zipping up that core. One, two, three, zip it up here, five, six, seven. And at the end, you want to settle that left hip back to help you with that opposition which will contribute to good balance. And then we basic one, two, three, turn, five, six, seven, zip the position, back to your basic. Whew, okay. So those are some things to think about as you struggle with some things that are throwing you off balance. I hope that this really helped you. Let's do a quick recap. We have our massaging of the feet, do that often so that you can really widen the feet, release the tension, and give you a stronger base. Then focus on your maintaining your turnout, the placement of your feet, so that you have more um, range of motion of opening the hips. Then I want you to focus on tracking. So following that in step, and then also how large is your step? It shouldn't be too large, this is a fast dance. So however far your leg extends from your knee, that's the size of your step. Same thing going back, your knees touch, and then you can take your back step. And then we talked about uh, the part of the foot that you should be pushing off of on every step, and that is in between the big toe and the second toe. Then we moved up towards the upper body where we talked about opposition in the uh, hips, ribs, and shoulders to help create more of a counterbalance within your own movement. Lastly, we talked about engaging your core so that you can really have a lifted connection throughout your body, a lengthened spine, and help you to maintain a good alignment when you're especially doing turns. That's all we have for you today. As always, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for other videos you would like to see, we would love to hear it. So also let us know in the comments below. And stay tuned for our next video. Can't wait to see you soon.